What's up guys, welcome to a new video. Today we are going to be talking about obviously what is right behind me, the Porsche 911 991 Turbo S. I've been waiting a long, long time to make this video on this car and it's one of my favorite Porsches and I've never driven one before so it's awesome to be able to be here and drive it in Monaco. I am also going to say before you guys start commenting, I have a mask in my pocket. Monaco is now open, like quite a few places now, so we don't need to stay home anymore. It's no longer in quarantine. But when you go in shops, you do need to have your mask on you. So I've got that with me, but right now, because we're out in the public, we don't need to wear the mask necessarily. So it makes it a lot easier for a video like this. But anyways, I hope you guys are well. Also wanted to say there's still 70% of you watching this channel that are not yet subscribed. So if you are watching this and you're not yet subscribed, why don't you click the little button down below and join us for many more adventures with cars such as this one. What a beast it is. If you come over here, I want to show you, this is my favorite angle of this car. I think, and this may be controversial, that the Turbo Series cars are actually the most beautiful, the ones that look the best, photograph the best of the 911 series, more than a GT2 RS, GT3 RS. I just think they've gotten all the proportions right and the way it looks with kind of this beefy body kit. I've actually just been sent some clothing. Look what's written on the back, Turbo. Very relevant for today, I'd say. Anyways, so, this is a 991 Turbo S, so it's now um, actually out of date. It's been replaced by the 992 Turbo S, which has a lot more power, and we'll hopefully do a video with that one day. However, this one is not just a 991, it's a 991.2. So there was a facelift version of the 991 generation Porsche. This is one of those, and they changed a few things. So there's uh, obviously the usual lineup of 911s. It's hard to keep track, but you've got the Carreras, the Carrera S's, the GTS's, the Turbo, and then the Turbo S. So this one comes in with 552 brake horsepower, 0 to 16 under three seconds, and the name Turbo is because it's got twin turbos. Uh, so a twin turbocharged flat six engine, absolutely stunningly beautiful, as you've seen. It used to be that the easiest way to recognize a turbo was through these air vents, but now the GT2 RS, the GT2 RSs also have these. Um, one of the differences it has compared to those cars is it is four-wheel drive. So this is kind of the ultimate GT in a way from Porsche. So the car that you can cruise around in, long trips, it's got all of the amenities of a standard Carrera, but it's got the power um, that, it, that rivals the GT3 RS kind of range. So awesome kind of mix between the two parts of the Porsche range, it brings it all together nicely. And I think, they may have been the title of the video, I'm not sure, but these, if, you've, if money's no object for you, these are kind of the perfect daily driver sports car. So there are a lot of cars, obviously, which have similar performance, but they're so hardcore, which makes these incredible, kind of in the similar way to the 720S, is just how competent they are. Anyways, before we talk about it anymore, out here, why don't we get in, start the car up, and go for a little drive. Before we get driving, uh, how did we end up with this car? Now, this is through a dealership we work with here in Monaco called Stars Monte Carlo. I'm gonna put their Instagram on the screen in the description. Uh, I would love for you guys to go follow them because obviously that would allow us to make more videos in the future with them. And it's a beautiful spec. This car is for sale. Inside, it's got the sport seats which actually don't come standard on all turbos. It's got the panoramic sunroof, Alcantara headliner, carbon finished interior, which is an expensive option. Here is actually where you hide your cup holders, it's kind of cool. Poke them out like that, but then when you don't want them to be visible, you just hide them away. Yeah, really nice finish. It's got the touch screen on the new 991s and the new 991 steering wheel with your driving mode here, which we'll explore in a little bit. But you just start it by turning there, key in the pocket, put the double clutch PDK gearbox in to drive, ask Air One to shut the door, and off we go. I'll see you guys in a bit. Right, let's see what you can do. Not that at all, but I mean, that's no hidden fact that Porsche turbos, and especially the Turbo S, are incredibly rapid. I'm actually being a bit of an idiot. I've got it in Sport Plus around town in manual, which is probably not how you should drive it. And the basis of this video is mainly how usable this car is because we're not going to be taking it out and driving around little roads just because at the moment you still need to stay in a certain area around where the garage is based. But this car, it, it is shockingly competent. It's got that McLaren 720S kind of feel to it. You know, I'm going to whack it into auto 
and comfort. So that's done through the steering wheel down here. So the suspension instantly kind of loosens up and becomes quite a bit more compliant and it changes gear so rapidly so you're instantly kind of up into third, fourth gear. It's got quite a lot of torque, nearly 500 Newton meters of torque. So that's no big deal for it. You know, you, you've got power as soon as you want it. And the double clutch PDK gearbox, as we know, is probably the best in the game. So it's so responsive. You've instantly got all the power you could ever wish for. And the way these things put the power down, I mean, it's just brutal. Through the four wheel drive, it just kind of grips and goes instantly. You feel kind of embellished, surrounded in luxury because you really are. I mean, there's just leather, Alcantara, everything around you, which means that this car, if you were to want to drive it daily, it would just, it would be a breeze. You've got two little back seats behind you, which you can't really fit full-fledged adult into, but um, you could definitely, you know, if you need to drive someone back from a dinner or something like that, and it's a short drive, no problem at all. The visibility, is unbelievable. That's one thing that they've kind of always gotten right with 911s is the usability of the cars. The boot around front is not too bad. I mean, it's not massive, but you've got the rear seats which you can put down and that kind of clears up a massive space behind you if you're going on a slightly longer trip. And everything's just good. You've got a great Bose sound system in this one so you can cruise, no problem with your music on. And it's just, it does everything. There's nothing this car doesn't do. Now, the one thing as you maybe heard when we accelerated in the tunnel, it doesn't make that much noise. It kind of sounds like it's a bit out of breath, the car. So it doesn't shout, it doesn't scream. You can put exhausts on these and uh, they sound pretty good, but no GT3 RS. Kind of similar-ish, a tuned down version of the GT2 RS kind of sound, which it brings me on to the, I think the main fault of these is the character. It lacks character. It's a little bit too German, this car. It's too good for its own good. Again comparing it to the 720S, which is kind of similar in that way. It's astonishing, and it's crazy that that can actually be a fault, but the car doesn't make your, your hair stand on end, it doesn't give you goosebumps. It's unbelievably pretty, I think, and super competent, but it's not the car, you know, you're gonna wake up on a Sunday morning and necessarily feel like blasting down a country lane, even though, if you were to do so, you'd probably set a record and do it in all comfort, but it doesn't make you wanna do that. Which is why I think the perfect use for this, if you've got lots of money, and that is not a problem, is literally to drive it kind of as your do-it-all car, which does everything perfectly. It's kind of like an impractical RS6 in a way, this car. Um, it does everything that an RS6 can do, apart from the practicality side of things. It kind of does everything to a more extreme version, like the RS6, so it's, it's a little bit faster. It's not quite as practical, but um, it's kind of the sports version of an RS6. You can use it any day, anywhere, in any condition, you know, whether it's snowing, whether it's warm outside, whether you're on track, or whether you're just cruising to the grocery shops. You can do a bit of everything. Driving one for the first time is kind of exactly what you think it would feel like. Is it going to actually have more character than I thought? Or is the suspension gonna be a lot harder? Is it gonna be a bit harder to drive? Is it gonna feel big? No, it's kind of exactly what you think. You can drive around town, just hopped in it, and you feel instantly comfortable behind the wheel. Doesn't feel big. As I mentioned, visibility is really good. And it just feels like you can do anything. Like you could crunch miles in this thing. You could drive to London, no problem. Yeah, it just feels, you feel kind of invincible in this, like you could do anything. The only issue with being in it is I can't see it from the outside. <laughs> so every time we cross like a mirror, I keep looking for the reflection because I think it is so beautiful, especially in this spec. If I was in the market for one now, I'm not just saying this because they lent us the car, honestly, I think this is like the perfect spec. I love the red interior. I love the silver on the outside, the center locking wheels. I just think they've nailed this car. Ooh, look at this, very cool. 812 in British racing green. Wow, and a pista behind it as well. That is awesome. For when you put away the instant torque and power, oh, it's brutal. Right, I'm gonna put it back into Sport Plus and we may be able to give it a little acceleration here. Of course, we're driving around town, so we need to be a little bit careful. Oh my God. I mean, it literally just, oh, it glues you to your seat. That is brutal. <laughs> it's insane. And the gearbox, I mean, you can just play around with it. It is so responsive, so quick. You do feel the suspension really stiffen up when you go into Sport Plus. Oh 
Okay. Yeah, you need to be careful with this thing. You need to be very careful because as soon as you start accelerating, I'm not saying we're doing illegal speeds. I'm saying you could potentially fairly easily be doing illegal speeds. I really like it. Oh, I mean, it's like so good that you ask yourself, is it worth kind of just sacrificing all that character that you get from other cars because of how competent this is? I mean, even there, you go over a speed bump, you don't need to worry about the front splitter. Go around a corner, it's glued to the road like train tracks. So, so good. I've always loved these from the outside and when I've been in them, I thought they were good. And you know the kind of don't meet your hero type thing? I was worried I'd be really disappointed and it wouldn't behave the way I, I wanted it to. But no, I mean, this is far more. This exceeds what I thought it would be. Awesome stuff. Right, let's go back and pull over before we end up doing some speeds that are no bueno when we're out of town. Let's bring it back to Stars Monte Carlo. Last acceleration. Okay. And we're back. We've dropped the car off, so the mask is back on, seeing as we're here. If you didn't see, actually, we did a video with this last week, um, which we'll link now somewhere on the screen, but Koenigsegger gear are really cool. But that was awesome. We just dropped the car off right under here, so I thought I'd finish the video in the dealership so you could see some of the cars. So massive thank you, of course, to Stars Monte Carlo, to yourself for watching this. Please subscribe if you have not already, and we'll be seeing you again very soon. Please comment also down below what you think of the 9N1 Turbo S. I give it a massive thumbs up. Cheers, guys. Bye-bye.